Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Insight at Speed, Agility at Scale, Click the Couchbase with Simba ODBC Connectivity. My name is Tove Whitmore. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Simba Technologies in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm going to be providing the introduction today. I will keep it very, very brief. Uh, today I'm going to be joined by, uh, first, by Mike Foster, the Vice President of Strategic Partners at Click, and he's going to show off some of the cool new features in Click. And he'll hand off then to Elon Silva, the Senior Product Manager at Couchbase, who will also show off some of the cool stuff about Couchbase. And then finally, my colleague Kyle Porter, Senior Sales Engineer here at Simba, will put it all together and demonstrate first how to connect Click to Couchbase using Simba ODBC, uh, but then also put it into practice, showing off some cool business use cases, uh, what you can accomplish with the, the the power of Click and the flexibility of Couchbase once they're brought together. A couple of quick administrative details. If you have any questions during the webinar, please submit them via the questions window in your little GoToWebinar app there. We'll try to get to all of them. If we're not able to, we'll try to, I'll, I'll collect them and we'll try to follow up with you individually via email after the webinar. Secondly, if you miss any part of today's webinar or if you just want to hear it again, we'll post a recording of it to the Simba.com website. Uh, I hope within 48 hours or at least as soon as I can uh, package it and get it onto YouTube. And so with that, let me hand it off to Mike Foster from Click, who will show you, introduce Click to you. Mike, take it away. Thank you very much, Tov. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to everybody on the webinar. Delighted to be here today to speak about our integration uh, with Couchbase uh, via Simba. Um, as he, as Tolf introduced me, my name is Mike Foster. I look after our technology partners and our strategic partners at Click. So I'm very pleased to be invited to do this today. And I just want to take a, a few moments to, well, for those who don't know, Click introduce us, uh, talk about our, our platform, and obviously then talk in detail about the integration and the value we want to deliver with Couchbase to our common customer base. So Click, for those who don't know us, we've actually been around for in excess of 20 years, started in Sweden, uh, now headquartered in Pennsylvania and Radnor. Publicly quoted, we've got 37,000 customers, 1,700 partners globally of different types, whether they're resellers, solution providers, OEMs, or technology partners. We're a very partner-driven company. And we have a presence in over 100 com countries today, so a global reach for our business. We employ more than 2,000 people, and as you can see from our growth over the recent years, it's been outpacing the market as we've pioneered and led the data discovery market. Those 37,000 customers, we want to make them happy, so we're very attuned to their data strategies and data roadmaps, and also to our partners. And it's quite evident the emergence particularly of NoSQL technologies becoming more and more of a key component in that data roadmap for our partners and customers. So we have to be able to integrate with it. And one of the most preferred and common methods is via ODPC. So being able to work with Simba to deliver that integration to our customers is meeting their needs and also showing the innovation around NoSQL that's required for us to sustain our presence in the market. Click itself, as we differentiate ourselves from the market, you know, it, it, it's one of the key tenants with Click is showing the whole story that lies within your data. You can bring that data from multiple data sources, but being allowed people not just to do the descriptive and say what happened or the diagnostic, but also lead to the what if across all their data and ask questions of their data they never intended to ask because we open up the data in such a, an intuitive way to step through it in a non-linear, you know, non-hierarchical structure. And you're going to see that I'm going to do it through example and hopefully you'll see it when Kyle brings it alive through Sense. And we'll click, we're a platform for visual analytics. We're not a tool. So today, you know, we can deliver apps for guided analytics for your business users. We can give self-service for those business users who want to build the analytics themselves with rich 
interfaces, modern interfaces, whether they want to just use our engine and embed those with other web analytical apps or their enterprise tools. Or we can just deliver reporting out to business users who still prefer to ingest and data and their decision making in a, a simple report format. And also, we have to deliver agility. The BI market historically hasn't, and that's where Click has really, you know, separated itself from the pack. The speed at which we can deliver the value for our business users in a time that matters, particularly now that we see the changing landscape and you know people's time is compressed to make a decision. A decision usually has to be data driven, and meeting that need, you know, some of the older tools by the time they meet the need, the decision phase has passed, so Click is critical in delivering that business value, but doing it in an enterprise way that's structured and governed and can be embraced by IT so it can scale out, not for 100 users, but tens of thousands or even further number of business users. So when I talk about seeing the whole story that lives within your data, traditional tools are very hierarchical and drill down and you see what you ask of the data. With Click, we present all the data, all the data associated, and you select. In this case here, you're looking at patients and hip replacements that cost more than $10,000. In the Click world, you would probably look at hip replacements. You would look at was the cost greater than $10,000. And you will see all that's associ associated with your selections in white and not, not associated in gray. And this is very powerful because you can immediately start asking questions about, okay, why is certain doctors recommending certain prosthetics are, are far more expensive than others? Is it a small set? Is it a training issue? What's the preference? You know, how can I... Bear with me there. Sorry. So, again, it raises the questions, and we often talk about the power of the gray, looking at the, the information that's not associated and how that can build into your questioning theory. So, a modern analytics platform has to be able to provide a data integration and management to enable complex scalable analysis, whether the source is NoSQL, standard relational, flat file, application, the indexing, the associative model to give the freedom and exploration to the business users so they can make, you know, you're getting speed of thought response from the application to your questions. And obviously with the associated enterprise readiness you expect around governance and security. The visualizations, they should be modern, they should be of your choice if you want to use D3. Different types of visualizations, you should be able to plug them in on the engine to tell your story with the data. And that's enabled through open APIs and the capability to extend and embed. And those toolkits are there for you to accelerate and simplify your development and creation. And you can choose as well, what is your preferred model? Is it click running on-prem, on cloud, cloud to cloud, having that flexibility to meet your needs and often where your data resides is critical. And also, we need to have a broad ecosystem and community to inspire that innovation, whether it's your technology partners or your community of users like our Click community or our visual community at Branch. So all of those factors we consider as we look towards our modern platform. And this gives a showcase across the platform. And we start from the bottom up. We have the Click Analytics Associative Engine, the analytics platform, QAP. And that underpins and powers all of our solutions. We have ClickSense, our modern self-service discovery platform. We have ClickView with our guided analytics. Now version 12, which we just released last week, supports the QAP platform. We have ClickCloud, where we can share those analytics. And end printing where we can do report distribution via different channels like email, etc. And we have Click Data Market, which is an information service we can plug in to enrich our app development with weather data, currency data, or any other information services that are relevant to you. And 
we're starting to launch that new packages to meet market demand. From an integration perspective with Simba and Couchbase, we have validated it against both ClickSense and ClickView for ingestion. So our solution will work with both of those, and that data can obviously be shared via ClickCloud for collaboration with business users, or can be distributed out via our report engine, which is end printing. And if you wish, you can enrich that data from Couchbase with A, another source, or from our data market. So today our integration works across the entire platform. This guy just gives you a sense of the broader ecosystem. Obviously we have a key presentation layer and other an advanced analytics integrations, whether it's predictive or data integration, the different platforms we work on. But as a data source, you can see across the breadth of applications, whether it's structured, unstructured, or NoSQL, Couchbase for us is a very relevant participant, and we're delighted that our partnership is moving forward with them. And Simba, of course, from an ODPC perspective, have, we've collaborated over the long term with them to provide ODPC access, not just to Couchbase, but to other technologies. I know Kyle is going to get into the demo. He's going to show some of the integration. And within the Click platform, we've got a few different methods of integration we can support. Obviously, the most straightforward is extracting data and putting it into memory within the Click analytical uh, platform engine, which we support today. We also have direct discovery where we can, from our app, directly query in database and return the results into our application. We also support that with Simba and Couchbase. So you can have that hybrid of in memory and in database, which is critical as we start looking at bigger data solutions where we know memory is finite and you can only bring in on demand what you need. And we have other techniques which we internally use to chain our applications together or build an application on the fly from the source, all of which today will support Simba access to Couchbase NoSQL data. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Elam from the Couchbase team, and I hope you enjoyed the demo. Uh, as Tov said earlier, he will post a recording uh, online, and we, we will add to that with some how-to uh, guides, etc., to support the integration, and we look forward to working with you guys on it. Great. Um, can you hear me? Well, okay. Um, yeah, I'll continue. Answer. Great. Thank you. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for taking your time to attend this webinar. Um, my name is Elam Siva. I'm a product manager with Couchbase. Uh, and wanted to talk to you about some of the great enterprise capabilities uh, that you get with Couchbase uh, for data management. Um, we'll briefly look at the Couchbase uh, as a company, what's driving NoSQL adoption, how customers are solving problems using Couchbase, uh, what makes us unique, and importantly, also talk about Nickel, uh, which is our new query language that we put out uh, and the ecosystem that it's allowing us to uh, connect our customers to. So at a glance, uh, Couchbase is a, is a NoSQL um, leader. Uh, we, we've done very well in terms of performance, availability, and scale. Um, and, and as you can see, we have a fairly global presence and that's continuing to grow. Uh, and, and we're really focused on innovating in this space. Uh, we want to make sure that we provide customers the maximum value um, so they can build the next generation scalable applications and, and be successful in doing that. Um, in terms of major trends that are driving the need for database solutions, and new database solutions, and you can see the web cloud is certainly something that's expanding, um, and people are having big data, obviously, in terms of like volume, velocity, the type of data that's getting stored. And you need access from mobile as well as uh, various other forms of devices. And, and, and um, while we won't delve too deep in this presentation, Couchbase also offers uh, 
Couchbase Lite, which is a mobile database as well. And uh, as you can see here, um, there's extremely high uh, throughput and, and users and massive data volumes that are being supported, um, running in terabytes, billions of impressions per day, and, and a lot of these customers use such kind of a scalable solution from Couchbase to handle these various use cases that are that they need. Um, when we talk about big data, uh, really there are two ways, there are two, two aspects to it. There is an operational aspect, which is the real-time interactive databases, and there's also a more deeper batch-oriented analytic aspect to it. Um, so when we look at big data, we look at it as a combination of this operational and analytic use cases. Um, now Couchbase, uh, we play more in the uh, real-time interactive side, um, where there's web or mobile or IoT apps and like millions of cu customers, huge number of transactions, high scale required. So we play on that side. Uh, and of course, there is the Hadoop, uh, which is more for the batch-oriented, uh, deep analytics, um, several hundreds of business analysts type stuff. And um, Couchbase actually works with Hadoop. So we, we coexist with Hadoop. Uh, a lot of our customers use us for the real time. They sometimes move the data into Hadoop when they want to do like real deep batch oriented analytics. So so we play more in the real time, but we kind of coexist with the Hadoop as well. So I just wanted to paint a broad big data picture. Um, and why not relational databases? I, I come from a relational background myself, and I, I like relational systems, and, and they're great for certain use cases. But they have a certain limitation as well. Uh, they're challenged if there's sub-millisecond response times required. Uh, it's difficult or sometimes very expensive to scale them. Um, and there's rigid schemas. Uh, it's great for structured data, but a lot of the data today uh, may not always be structured. It may be semi-structured or unstructured data as well. And uh, so that's some of the reasons driving uh, non-relational models of data to emerge. And uh, that's the primary reason why customers go with something like Couchbase for, for some of their solutions. Um, and what does Couchbase provide in terms of this is more of a quick, like the four pillars that we, that we rely on. Uh, it's consistent performance. Uh, it's, it's important to note that this is at scale. Uh, easy, affordable scalability, uh, and it's elastic, so you can you can scale more when you need. You can you can reduce or you can shrink uh, when the demand is less. So it's elastic. Uh, certainly, high availability. Uh, there is no downtime for business these days, so high availability is critical. And importantly, the flexible data model, which differentiates us from the relational systems as well, which is not that rigid. So it's that that flexible data model is something that really helps. Uh, modern applications when you have schema or uh, a flexible schema or schema changing very quickly, things like that. Um, and this is a, a eye chart in terms of like a large number of customers, and you can see we are in we are uh, in different verticals, and it's continuing to expand. Whether it's technology or communications or travel, games, a whole bunch of things, and and we are across the board with various customers in, in different uh, aspects of uh, industry. And, and a quick look at, again, at the Couchbase partner ecosystem, whether it's software, we have a lot of hardware partners, we work with cloud cloud providers, mobile, we have a mobile product as well, so we work with mobile providers, and a lot of system integrators. So, so we are continuously growing our partner ecosystem as well. Um, some of the use cases, how enterprises are using Couchbase to drive business value. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, there's there's a lot more than what's presented here, but we've tried to abstract into a few use cases which are commonly seen. Uh, user profile management, uh, there's a lot of personalization use cases. Internet of Things is something that's really growing. Um, we're finding a lot of uh, folks now trying to do Internet of Things, meshing data, uh, and that's certainly something that, that's growing. Uh, mobile applications, um, definitely another area. Content management is an interesting area. A lot of people sometimes what they do is um, they may even actually store the real content in a CDN, but they store metadata in Couchbase. It really helps them to sort of uh, quickly access the data as well in real time. Um, fraud detection is another area where 
we are seeing a lot of NoSQL use cases uh, emerging in fraud fraud detection and any type of real time cases as well. So this gives you like a perspective of the some types of use cases that our customers use a system like Couchbase for. Uh, how how does Couchbase solve these problems? Um, essentially. We provide a complete data management solution. Um, and the idea is you have a high availability cache built in. So there are some databases where you might have to use a third party caching provider, be it a Redis or whatever else you need. But Couchbase, it's important to note, it's not just the data system, it comes in with a built in high availability cache. So that's part of the product. Um, now of course we are a key value store, we are also a document database. Um, and like I said, mobile is now available, so it's actually there's a Couchbase Lite that you can put on your mobile, and that comes with the sync management. Now, that's important because the sync management system takes a lot of headache away from developers by keeping the data in sync between the devices as well as the backend data store. Um, why customers choose Couchbase? Um, this is often what we've seen is um, customers evaluate a product and a company based on the technology, but also on the support that's being provided and the services that we offer. Um, and 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 uh, we are happy to say that our customers experience really great level of support from our team here, and uh, it's one of those things that you know people have been happy with. Uh, as well as there is a center of excellence which is driving customer success. They work closely with customers and they they essentially partner with the customers to enable success. So along with the great technology, there's also the great support and services that, that Couchbase offers, which is why uh, it differentiates itself. Uh, and it's an important topic. What is Nickel? Uh, N1QL, it's pronounced as Nickel. Um, Nickel is a query language from Couchbase. Uh, it's very SQL-like. Um, and it, it's just pretty much like SQL and extension for JSON. So it's SQL for JSON. Nickel gives developers a, a very expressive, powerful, and importantly, a complete language for querying and manipulating JSON data. Uh, Couchbase, for the most part, stores JSON, and uh, we wanted to provide developers a very easy way to access and query and uh, be able to work with the JSON data, and that's the reason why Nickel was created. Um, and uh, this is a brief comparison, I won't go into details, but between relational and JSON, the important part to note is in a relational model, you sort of have to disassemble your data and constantly assemble that as when you want to showcase. Uh, in JSON models, um, by, by virtue of it, it's more closely matched with real life data, so there's not really much assembly that's required. And um, um, in terms of, uh, you know, Data can be updated in both. Uh, SQL is obviously a very, very powerful way to access relational data. And so far, um, in the NoSQL JSON model, that was lacking. But not, uh, until now, we didn't have much of it. But with Nickel, we have addressed that gap in a big way. And now we are very powerful in terms of the query language features as well. Um, and of course, with the uh, support for JSON, there's more of a less rigidity in terms of the structure of data, which means we are flexible and dynamic changes are embraced within this product. Um, so essentially Nickel is SQL for JSON, and from JSON we get the rich structure and the schema flexibility. And why we chose SQL is because SQL is a general proven pervasive query capability, and, and um, it, it's a powerful system. People understand SQL, they've been using SQL for a long time, and that is the reason why SQL approach was chosen. And so essentially, Nickel provides both the power of SQL on top of the flexibility of JSON. Um, and this is a brief overview of Nickel features. I won't go into a lot of this. If you know SQL, you know this. We support selects from where clause joins, group by, all of the nice stuff that you've seen in SQL. Um, you get it with Nickel, which makes it really powerful because now you have an easy way to query you know, SQL systems as well. Um, Similarly, joins, aggregations, minimum, maximum, all this stuff, um, counts, and uh, just things. All of this stuff, which, which people use to build applications, is completely supported in Nickel. Um, and also data modification statements like updates, inserts, all of that. And um, importantly, we also allow you to create indexes. Why? Because it's important for performance. Functionally, you can write a query, but you want it to perform well, 
then you're able to now create indexes on, on attributes that you need and the query actually uses these indexes to, to retrieve your data faster. So that's very powerful in the system. So uh, that's an important feature that we have as well. Um, Nickel also extends SQL. Uh, in, there are a couple of reasons. One is, for example, the use keys. If you have the key of a document, it's always highly, um, blazingly fast, I should say. To, to query using the key of our data. And so Nickel also supports the use keys constructs if you know the document key. Uh, we also support joins based on keys um, and also nesting and unnesting because JSON supports nested objects. So unlike relational, um, JSON natively supports nested objects and it supports arrays. So we have built in first class support for nesting and unnesting data within JSON hierarchies into Nickel query language itself. Um, and I, I haven't shown it here, but we also support array operations in, in JSON as well. So that is also fully supported. What are the benefits of Nickel for customers? Um, the, it's basically, it allows you to model your data cleanly. So you can use both relationships between documents. You can embed documents because JSON supports that. Whatever suits your business modeling best, you can use that and model your data cleanly in Nickel. Uh, using using nickel and uh, you can also query data with flexibility so you can you can query across structures you can join data so there's flexibility to do that and you can also develop rich applications um, with agility the reason is it's a declarative language so there's less code to write um, and which means you can go fast and be very productive uh, with building applications and you can use your favorite clients we support java uh, we support uh, python we support Node.js, we support uh, .NET, so there's a lot of frameworks and client libraries we support. So you can use your favorite programming language to, to build applications using Nickel. And importantly, uh, tying to today's presentation, we leverage the ecosystem. So we provide connectivity uh, into BI, into analytics, cloud, packaged applications. So that's very important as well. Um, and it opens up our ecosystem. Simba provides the ODBC, JDBC drivers, which allows Couchbase to connect to various data sources. Click is one of them, uh, and, and we saw the great power of Click, uh, which was presented earlier. We also allow you to connect to other systems, be it Informatica, or Tableau, or even Microsoft, Excel, and you know, a whole bunch of uh, So it opens up our ecosystem. It opens up how you can visualize and use Couchbase data. Um, so that's very powerful. And uh, that's pretty much what I had. and. Um, Thank you very much again, and uh, I'd like to pass it to Kyle. Thank you, Willem. Uh, that was great. Uh, my name is Kyle Porter. I'm a senior sales engineer here at Simba. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of, of uh, where Simba fits in the picture with Click and Couch. Um, and then I'm going to dive into a little bit of a how-to about how to actually get your data from Couchbase into Click and a little bit of what you can do um, showing off uh, Click View. So, you're probably looking at this and wondering, what, what am I showing here? Um, well, SIM is actually the bridge or the glue or the pipe or the on-ramp to your data. Uh, that means that we allow your application to connect to your data. In this case, we're allowing Click to connect to Couchbase um, using an ODBC driver that we built for Couchbase. So on the right, you can kind of see a little bit of an architectural diagram with Click at the top and Couch at the bottom. We have an ODBC or JDBC interface, and then as Ilan was describing, we can allow you to query Couchbase using Nickel. And Nickel opens up a lot of power when you're analyzing JSON documents. Um, however, a lot of the applications out there right now don't, don't know how to talk Nickel. They don't understand it. They only know standard SQL. So what we've also done is we've added in the ability for our driver to take SQL queries and do translations to Nickel so that all of your existing infrastructure can be used. So that's kind of uh, where Simba sits, and I'm just going to jump right into the demo now. Now, when mo you've probably seen demos going on before, they, they've been looking at uh, you know flight data or weather data. Um, I thought we'd do a little something different. Uh, we're going to look at Pokemon data. Uh, you may have heard of Pokemon. If you haven't, uh, it's this big phenomenon by Nintendo. Uh, essentially, it was presented in a video game. They have movies and TV shows and all this stuff, um, but it's essentially there's these little creatures, you can capture them, and then you can pit them to, to fight each other. So I'm going to do some, a little bit of analysis on that, 
and kind of show you some of the power that you can do to pull out even uh, sort of pull out analytics on that basic data, and you can do more advanced analytics on your data. So I pulled off my Pokemon data from um, this public data set I found online for actually a JSON API for Pokemon, and I've loaded it into Couchbase. And just a, a note, you're going to need to be using at least Couchbase version 4. Um, that is the version that introduced Nickel support. I know they have version 4.1 coming out soon, adding even more features, but to use the ODBC driver and JDBC driver, you'll need to use Couchbase version 4 at least. So here I'm looking at my basic cluster overview. If you go to my data bucket, we can see that I have uh, a Pokemon data bucket. And we can see some of the documents here. Um, so I have three types of documents in my bucket. I have abilities, so that's the abilities that each Pokemon has. I have Pokemon themselves, and then I have a little bit of a mapping back and forth. So there's three different distinct types of documents within this one bucket. So we're looking at one of the documents for abilities right here. Now, one other side note is that once you've imported your data into Couchbase, to use it through Nickel, you need to create a primary index. And Couch has a bunch of great tutorials, sorry, tutorials on this. Um, if you do a search around their website, but essentially it's going to look like create primary index on your bucket. Once you do that, it will be available for querying through Nickel and through the driver. So we have some data to analyze. We have Couchbase set up. We have our data in Couchbase. Next thing you need is you're going to need the drivers to do the analysis. So you can go to Simba.com and you can download a free trial um, to get working right now. So once you have the driver installed, then you're going to go to your ODBC administrator and you're going to go configure a DSN. For those of you that don't know, a DSN is just like a pre-stored connection string, something you enter once so you can use it over and over again. So I've entered in my server and my port. I'll do a test. We can see that I can successfully test. Um, just a note, if you go to your advanced options, you can change your query mode from SQL to nickel. So you can make use of that power of nickel. Um, if you know how to, to write nickel queries off the bat. Now the other thing to do um, is to go generate a schema. The reason you do this is, as Ellen was explaining, Couchbase is a NoSQL store. So that means that you can throw your data in there. You don't have to worry about the format of it um, when you're putting it in, and you don't have to worry about the format of it if you're querying it in nickel. The only time you really have to worry about it is when you're using SQL. And that is because SQL expects a fixed schema. That is, each row looks the same as every other row, and the data types for your columns in each row need to be consistent. So we do that, but we just generate a schema here. And this will pop up. We'll just throw in a sample size. So what we do is we do some sampling of the data to infer the data types. And you notice this type name list here. So if we go back to Couchbase, we go back to our Pokemon document. So you know, you'll remember that I said we have abilities, we have Pokemon, and we have a mapping between the two. So that's three distinct types of documents in my bucket here. Each of those has this type field identifying what type of document it is. And this is going to be used by our schema generation so that we can create some views on that. So here I have my Pokemon bucket is using type. So if we go generate this. We can now edit our schema. And over here you can see we have Pokemon, and then we actually have what, three tables or three views that are created on this underlying bucket. So we have abilities, Pokemon abilities, and our Pokemon type. And here you can see each of the columns. And if you wanted to, you could even manually manipulate this. However, the generation does a pretty good job, so we're just going to leave it as is. And we're going to throw that schema into Couchbase. Done. So now we're done configuring our, our connection. And the next part is actually to use ClickView. I've already set up just a basic document here, um, just to uh, avoid the little startup part, but I haven't done anything. So to use an ODBC driver in ClickView, we go to File and Edit Script. So this will pop up this window. And then we want to connect to an ODBC driver. We can choose Couchbase, and we can and I should note that this Couchbase 
ODBC DSN is what we were just configuring. We'll go OK. And you can see that that adds this line here to our script. The next thing to do is we want to pick out what data we're actually interested in analyzing in Couchbase in Click. So I'm going to choose my Pokemon schema. And there are the three tables that we found before that are all based on that one bucket. We'll pick which columns we want to use. So I'm going to take everything but my primary key and my type for abilities, and same for all my other tables here. We can go OK. And you could also here, you could change this to be a direct query. Right now I'm doing a query where I'm pulling data into Clip. But if you have a much larger set of data, then you're not going to want to pull the data into Clip. You're going to want to leave it in Couchbase and do the analysis there. And in that case, you're going to use just direct discovery which you can find out more about after. So once I've done that, then we can go and reload our data. So you can see it's going and pulling the data back. And now we can start analysis. Before we do that, I'm going to open up the table viewer. And we can see the relationship that Click has found between all of our tables. So our Pokemon type is mapped to our Pokemon abilities, is mapped to our uh, abilities. That just gives you kind of the relationship view, which is actually pretty cool because of what Click can do in uh, visualizing the relationships between these. So I'm going to add just a simple list box to begin with, and I'm going to show off all of my Pokemon. So that just gives me a list of all of my Pokemon. Then we can do a search here. You know, maybe we want to look at Pikachu. If you if you know uh, Pokemon, you probably know Pikachu. So you can actually do a search um, of all of the the Pokemon that I've listed here. And we can see Pikachu shows up. Now I'm also going to add another list box, which has the abilities for my Pokemon. I haven't done anything, but if I now search for Pikachu and select them, this highlights all of the relationships between them. So I can see for my Pikachu Pokemon, I actually have two abilities, Lightning Rod and Static. And this works both ways. So I can actually choose an ability and see which Pokemon have it. They go back and forth. I'm going to add another list box here. I'm just going to show off generation ID. So Pokemon have been around long enough that there's actually multiple generations of Pokemon, um, which probably doesn't mean much unless you're an actual Pokemon nerd. But there's been many revisions, so I can see which Pokemon belong to each revision. And then another thing, if I want to search, I can actually do um, numeric searches. So let's say I want to find all of them greater than four. I know there's only a few here, but um, you can see the kind of the power. If you have you know thousands upon thousands of entries here, you can easily select um, those that are relevant to you. Now we can even go a little further, and we can actually show the frequency. And this shows you the count of um, the abilities within each generation. And another list box here. So base experience. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can take Pokemon and you can pit them to battle each other so that you can essentially trade your Pokemon based on these battles. And, and when you do, every time you win, you get a certain amount of experience, which makes you stronger. You can see that there's a whole bunch of uh, experience here. Again, I can do numeric searches, so everything under 100, and that will pull out all of my Pokemon that have less than 100 experience. But there's an easier way that I can visualize this. Instead of in a one column, I can have multiple columns. And now, if I say generation four, I can see which experiences are all in generation four. I can see which abilities are all relevant. And I can see which Pokemon are relevant. Very, very simply. Now I'm going to add a statistic box so we can actually find out a little bit more of what's going on here. And I'm going to put on statistics on my experience. So I'll pull out the median, the standard deviation. I have some average, min, max, and already selected here. And there's additional power, additional things you can pull out if you need. So here you can see we have statistics on our base experience. So the minimum is 36, our max is 608. And we can even go and select max, which will then pull out that Lucy is the Pokemon with the maximum experience as well as their abilities and which generations they're in. 
So this looks, you know, this looks a little bit bland right now. It shows a lot of information, but we can we can spruce this up and we can put in some charts. So I'm going to make just a simple pie chart, and I'm going to do it on our generation ID. And then this brings up the edit expression. And this edit expression allows you to type in any expression that you actually want to measure. I'm just going to do a simple numeric count of the different Pokemon in each generation. And then we can finish. And this brings up a little pie chart here. Now if you hover over one, you can see that it pops up and shows us a little bit of information. We can make this more easily discoverable by putting out percentages. So I'm going to click the relative option here for percentages. And then I'm going to show my numbers in my legend. And now we can see that you know generation three is 55, almost 56% of the Pokemon, and so on. Now, if I choose you know, two generations, I can see that this updates and my percentages are now relative to what I've selected and filtered on. Now we can do something a little bit more complex. We'll put in another chart. And we're actually going to make a combo chart. So this shows both bars and uh, lines combined in one. Again, I'm going to do base experience. And what I want to do is I want to see if there's a correlation between how much an experience a Pokemon is worth versus the height of that Pokemon and the weight of those Pokemon. So we'll pick out base experience. This brings up our expression editor again of what we want to actually measure. So I'm going to take the average height, put that in there. And I'm also going to add my average weight. Put that in there, and we'll finish. I'll just resize this a little bit. So the red line is our average weight, and then the blue bars are the average height. And you're probably wondering where the blue lines are, or the blue bars are. If you squint really, really hard, you can see them right down there. They're very tiny. So what we can do to fix that we can actually change the scaling of our axes. So if we go to average height, we can choose a log scale instead. And now you can see that our scaling on the left here for our height, oh, sorry, our weight, has, uh, has gone to log scale. And now we can actually see um, the height as well. And it looks like there is a little bit of a general trend upward. We can actually pick that out by using some trend lines. So we had average height. I'm going to choose the exponential trend line for both of these. So you can see there's, there's many other options here. Right there. There we go. And indeed, you can see that there is a general trend. As the Pokemon get higher and the Pokemon get heavier, they are worth more. And now all of these are linked by their relationships. So you know I can look at maybe generation, uh, Pokemon in Generation 6, and everything's updated or five. Or I want to look at Pokemon that you know, are only worth less than 100. So this, you know, I built this dashboard really quickly for you, and I just barely scratched the capabilities that are in ClickView. You can already see how much information I can easily pull out based on this data. So I encourage you to go explore um, what Click can do, and also explore what Couchbase offers you in terms of how you can scale out and how you can do some analysis on some incredible amounts of data. And that wraps up our demo. So I'm going to push this back to you, Toph. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, we've got a couple of questions uh, I wanted to cover. Uh, first, I want to make sure that everyone please note the website. You can get more information at uh, click.com, zumba.com, and couchbase.com. But we do have a couple of questions. Uh, I'll ask those uh, so we can get some answers from our panelists. Uh, the first question, I think this is uh, for you, Mike, at Click. Uh, do the 37,000 Happy Click customers list, does that list include engineering and construction companies, heavy industry like mines and mon mineral processing, uh, heavy chemical industry? Uh, any benefits in that space? Uh, yeah, obviously, we, we work across all verticals. And when I showed, I just picked out mainly sectors. So as we look at our manufacturing sector, that supports our initiatives across the heavy uh, engineering uh, efforts like construction, mining, and chemicals. So we have a very strong presence, particularly in those uh, segments with ClickView today, and that's increasing with ClickSense. 
And uh, yeah, I'd like to say to Kyle, well done, man. You did a, a really quick app there. And I hope people you know, get a sense of you know, how quickly you can take the value from Couchbase and push that out and diffuse it to your business users, whether it's ClickView or ClickSign. So thank you, Kyle. My pleasure. Cool. Um, another question here, uh, kind of two similar questions. Maybe we'll uh, start with you, Elam. Uh, uh, I think I think some of this was in the slides, but maybe you can provide a little more detail. Uh, can I connect Couchbase to other BI tools? And the follow-up from that is uh, same question for Click. Can I connect Click to other data sources? Uh, Elam, why don't you start with the Couchbase perspective? Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, you can connect Couchbase to other. BI tools um, like a Tableau or even Excel or, or um, yeah, there are other tools as well. Pretty much um, with Simba uh, providing ODBC, JDBC drivers. In short, uh, if any tool uh, supports either ODBC or JDBC, uh, we should be able to connect that to Couchbase. So yes, the answer is yes. Cool. Mike, kind of same question to you from the uh, BI side, uh, connecting click to other data sources, similar uh, situation I assume? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from the ecosystem slide I showed earlier, you know, the breadth of coverage for our customers to leverage their investment, whether it's NoSQL, uh, Hadoop, relational, via ODBC or REST or application interfaces, uh, is critical from a BI platform perspective. And, you know, all of our connectors to those sources are free of charge, uh, except for some that we do for SAP. So for us, that's critical in terms of enabling value for our, our business users. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Um, next one uh, might be for Kyle and Elam. Uh, can you tell me more about direct discovery with the nickel connector? Yeah. Kyle here. Um, so yes, you can use uh, direct discovery with nickel. Um, you can use direct discovery with SQL as well. So when I was uh, going through the demo, I showed the initial editing script part. Um, when you're just pulling data in, you just uh, essentially put in query in your SQL. Um, when you're doing direct discovery, then you put, uh, I believe it's a direct query, and then you list off your uh, measures, your dimensions, and your detail. Um, and there's a lot more information about exactly what um, those mean in the click documentation. But essentially, it allows you to partially pull in some data and leave the other data at rest and do the analysis in the data source. Cool. Um, one last question here. Uh, looks like a quick question for you, Mike. Um, uh, can the dashboard combine, uh, I'm paraphrasing a bit here, can it combine access to multiple databases such as a Microsoft Access database and a Couchbase database? Absolutely. I mean, and that's our strength, our breadth of coverage. You know, via if we look at ClickView and you look at the uh, interface that Kai used to connect to Couchbase, we use the same interface to connect to other sources and we bring it all into the same associative model so that could be Pokemon data associated with uh, ERP data or it may just come from a, a flat file or combination of flat file and a SQL source so absolutely cool thanks Mike uh, and that's our last question with that I'd like to wrap up uh, my name is Toke Whitmore I'm the VP of marketing here at Simba and I'd really like to thank our panelists today, uh, Mike Foster, the strategic, uh, the VP of Strategic Partners at Click, and Elon Silva, uh, the Senior Product Manager at Couchbase, and of course my colleague Kyle Porter, Senior Sales Engineer here at Simba. Uh, uh, if for any reason you missed part of today's webinar or just want to hear it again, as I noted, we'll have the recording posted uh, up on our website within about 48 hours. Thank you everyone, and with that we'll sign off. Have a great holiday season.